With the magic powers believed to dwell inside a cloud of smoke, a Mayan healer performs an ancient cure. The rising smoke will lift away the patient's evil spirits. In an age-old Inca ritual, the fertile power of a tiny rodent is symbolically transferred to a troubled patient. Los sapos, como siempre, nos acudirán tanto a ti como a mí. To us, this kind of medicine may seem primitive and strange, for it is the work of people we call witch doctors. In remote places throughout the world, ritual and magic play a vital role in treating illness. Though ancient forms of healing may appear bizarre, they are often successful, even today. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. According to many old movies, witch doctors are fierce-looking natives frantically performing strange rituals. on their apparent healing ability, however, witch doctors should not be shrugged off lightly. Among the Zulu of Africa, he is the Ganja. The Tungus tribes of Siberia call him Shaman. To the North American Indian, his name means medicine man. In Latin America, he is the Curandero. The familiar term witch doctor was invented by European explorers to describe the role of healers in foreign cultures which they did not understand. If we attempted to scoff at the work of witch doctors, we should remember that throughout history, witch doctors have enjoyed as much success in their respective cultures as physicians have in ours. In the Yucatan region of Mexico, an annual religious ceremony intermingles the strong traditions of both Spanish and Mayan culture. A holy procession invokes the power of the Mayan rain god, Chak. The culmination of the ceremony, however, takes place in a Christian cathedral. Adorning the cathedral's face are ancient Mayan signs for the gods of the sun and the moon. Here, where Mayan culture is still alive, Ideas about illness and health are often strikingly different from our own. At 86, Philippa Chu is a respected Mayan witch doctor with a reputation for possessing especially strong powers. Today, a mother has brought her daughter to Philippa for help. The young girl wishes to marry a man her mother does not approve of. The mother hopes that Philippa's powers can dispossess the girl of her seeming obsession. She has brought several special plants and a strong local alcohol which will aid Philippa in her cure. Using the potent alcohol, as well as herbs believed to have curing properties, Philippa concocts a powerful potion.
Philippa is renowned for her use of so-called white magic, ridding people of spirits or hexes which they believe can afflict them. In her native Mayan language, Philippa chants to the spirits that are believed to affect the girl, urging them away. Rubbed directly onto the skin, the potion purges the spirits from the body. Credo vale rosa, rosa e blanca, color la rosa, son la pero, tres hermanos, no el padre, hijo, Dios, Espíritu Santo, a mi Jesús Man. Credo vale rosa, rosa e blanca, color la rosa, son la pero. When the unwanted spirits have been completely driven away, the potion is given a final blessing. To ensure that the spirits will not return, the potion must be swallowed. What is the result of Philippa's magic? or merely the power of a mother's persuasion and concern. The cure was successful. The girl decided to give up her plans for marriage, at least for now. In the lush jungles of the Yucatan, Anciana Santana stalks a valuable quarry. Objects of his hunt are berries, herbs, and plants with medicinal power. Santana is an herbalist, familiar with the special properties of hundreds of different tropical plants. With them, he will make an incredible variety of folk medicines. Santana's knowledge dates from ancient times. Both the Aztecs and Mayans had a highly developed medicinal pharmacopoeia. Cactus contained chemicals still used for the treatment of burns. Ipecac roots provided a cough remedy. The Dioscoria plant relieved skin disease. Every day, outside his simple hut, Anciana Santana is called upon to provide treatment for the ill. A troubled man complains of persistent headaches. Santana often determines if he can indeed provide a cure by divining the nature of the illness with the aid of a small glass ball. Once having decided that a cure is possible, Santana carefully prepares the proper plants and herbs. Often the leaves are cooked to enhance their medicinal power. Finally, the herbal medicine is ritually sealed in a bottle. Santana prescribes the dosage and tells his patient to return if the remedy is not effective. A surprising number of present-day drugs owe their discovery to primitive herb doctors throughout the world. Common aspirin has its origin in the bark of willow trees. Digitalis from foxglove leaves still is used to stimulate failing hearts. Quinine from cinchona bark provided the first cure for malaria. There is more to ancient medicine than a knowledge of healing plants. 
We are now beginning to understand the other forces at work in the witch doctor's rites of healing. Rites that are still performed with astonishing results. The Peruvian Andes, jagged domain of ancient Inca civilization. The magnificent city of Machu Picchu perched at the edge of a world filled with magical forces. In the cool mountain winds, there coursed hundreds of spirits whose powers affected all aspects of life. The power to cause illness was thought to reside in the spider. The spirit of health lived in the sun. With an old Inca witch doctor, or San Koyak, Dr. Fausto Aguilar practices an ancient Inca ritual. Leaves from the sacred coca plant are offered to the sun god in request for the power to cure. Dr. Aguilar holds degrees in both medicine and psychiatry. Yet, Aguilar has found that with many of his patients, he must also use traditional healing rituals, which are deeply ingrained in Peruvian culture. In his offices on the outskirts of Lima, symbols and customs serve as powerful medicine. Dr. Aguilar still performs the ancient ceremonies which are believed to ensure protection from the powers of evil spirits. His patient is a woman who was infertile. Though the patient is technically cured of her physical problem, Dr. Aguilar must also take into account the effect on the patient of cultural beliefs. And so, the cure begins. A long wooden rod symbolizes the healer's divine power. Apus, espíritus superiores. The rod will create a protective barrier to guard the patient from the return of malevolent spirits. prayer invokes the curing powers of the gods of the sun and the moon. In the early 19th century, when Western trained physicians began to practice their skills in Africa and Asia, they found that patients often did not respond to treatments and therapy that were effective in Europe. Increasingly, we are discovering that cultural tradition and belief play a powerful role in healing, that a patient often cannot be understood or cured away from his culture. Today, in Los Angeles, a unique program recognizes the power of culture in healing. At the Metropolitan State Mental Hospital, certain patients receive regular care from a witch doctor. Leon is a Mexican curandero. Before each curing ritual, he appeals to a great master for the power to heal and exorcise evil spirits. His patients are Mexican-Americans with strong ties to their native culture. The ceremony begins with prayer. Afterwards, Leon ritually exorcises each patient's evil spirits. His first patient, Pedro, suffers from a kind of cultural shock. Raised in a small Mexican village, 
Pedro's first exposure to the urban world of Los Angeles was emotionally overwhelming. Out of fear, he detached himself from reality and lapsed into a catatonic state. With all the powers he can summon, Leon concentrates on the particular spirits which he perceives to afflict each patient and works to drive them away. When Leon has completed his spiritual exorcisms, each patient receives a cup of water, which is ritually blessed and imbued with beneficial power. The water is a universal symbol of cleansing and health. The curing ritual ends as it began, in communal prayer to the spirits of health. Ignacio Aguilar is the founder and director of this remarkable clinic named Zipe Totec, after the Aztec god of spring and rebirth. In treating people who believe that mental disorders are often caused by curses or bewitchment, Aguilar uses ancient curing ceremonies to augment conventional treatment. <coughs> Maria suffers from a severe loss of identity and self-esteem and a crippling sense of personal guilt. As part of his efforts to treat Maria's complex emotional problems, Aguilar performs an age-old Aztec healing ritual. Smoke from fire, the visible form that all spirits take, symbolically draws malevolent forces out of her body. Aguilar commands that Maria's evil spirits go away. The leaves on a branch represent these spirits still clinging to her body. As each leaf breaks off, an unwanted spirit is symbolically cast away. Aguilar tells Maria that she has been cleansed, that she is no longer possessed. Now he tells her she is a new woman. O dentro de un momento, te quitamos esta protección que no, tenemos aquí. No. For Maria, the ancient ceremony has a powerful cathartic effect. Padre mío. Uh, symbols are very important things in our lives. And it's very important that we surround a patient that comes to a hospital where everything is alien to him in terms of his culture, that these symbols be uh, a vivid connection in order to establish a therapeutic relationship. Hence, the importance of having symbols like what you see on the walls and what you have seen throughout the ward. And what we're trying to do here is to provide treatment 
that in effect works to the extent that the person gets well. And when a patient comes with this kind of a problem to the hospital, and we provide the proper mediums, he leaves and he lives well. Familiar music is another powerful cultural tool that Aguilar uses. For the once totally withdrawn Pedro, it has provided the first step back into reality. When viewed outside of their cultural environment, the magical art of the witch doctor can be easily dismissed. Yet, in places where beliefs about the causes of illness are different from our own, the so-called witch doctor can function as an effective healer. A mastery of natural herbal remedies and the fact that most illnesses are overcome by the body's own defenses greatly aid the witch doctor's power. Perhaps more important, however, is the fact that many illnesses are psychosomatic. The ability to inspire confidence, trust, and faith is one of the most potent medicines of any doctor. <laughs> 